So if, if two people are in a relationship, whether they're married or whether they're, you know, whether they're, you know, they're dating, ready to get married, whatever, if you don't talk about the, the, the relationship and where it's going, then chances are the relationship is not going to be effective. It's going to fluctuate. Mm -hmm. Because when you talk to somebody, communication is the gateway to somebody's heart. Amen. 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 To, okay, the purpose of his blood. So anytime I get into a situation and my mind needs to be cleansed, I go to the word of God. I grab a hold to the scriptures. I understand my covenant promise. I say, Lord, wash me with your blood. Cleanse my mind. Cleanse my heart. Cleanse my spirit. Make me brand new through faith in Jesus Christ. You see what I'm saying? So everything starts and stops with Jesus. Everything else in between will work itself out, but everything starts and starts with Jesus. Did I answer your question? Reese? Can you explain salvation? Oh, it's a great question. The question is, class, can I explain salvation? In simplistic terms. Okay, so the word salvation. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do Salvation. Okay, let's take off. All right, y'all want to be a class, right? So I'm going to turn you to a class. Because I love writing on the board. Y'all know I love teaching, right? I can preach all day, but teaching takes work. So let's 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 do this, and let's do this. So then you got S A V E, save. Mm -hmm. So we took off, you know, just for grins and giggles, we took off the L and the H. So salvation, save. So that means I'm being saved. So save means what? To rescue. Mm -hmm. So what am I being rescued from? <laughs> the penalties of sin. The dominion of sin and the habits of sin. Jesus. The penalty is if I don't accept Jesus, who's the highest form of truth. Remember, Jesus represents the highest form of truth. If I don't have him, then at the end, and then in the judgment, and when, when this whole world is over, and Christ, like they say, cracks the sky, and the dead in Christ shall rise, verse that. If I don't have Jesus as the highest form in my relationship, then I'm going to fall into the category of, of, of experiencing the penalty of sin. Now when we deal with the dominion of sin, dominion means a domain or to have authority over. So Christ now comes, not only to save me from the penalty of sin, but now that sin can't reign in my life. So in other words, I stop making excuses for my behavior because of him. I stop making excuses for talking too much. Come on. I stop making excuses, amen, for lying and cheating and all these different things. I stop making excuses. So what I do is I tap into my connection so that my connection can change me. So we're talking about the penalty of sin, the domain of sin, and now the habit. The habits of sin is when we're doing things, amen, and we say, well, that's just the way I am. No, that ain't who you are. Because the Bible said, in Christ, you are a new creation. Why are you always flying off the handle? Oh, that's just the way I am. No, that's not the way you are. You're the way you are because you have trained yourself to do that, and no one ever checked that behavior. What? Because when you go to the Word of God, what the Word of God is, the Word of God trains and checks your behavior. Yes, I was in the book of Proverbs this morning and the Bible said that a man that is hasty in his spirit is a man that operates in folly. God was talking to me. A man that has a hasty spirit. In other words, hasty, a man that's emotional and a man that has a bad temper. When he flows in the spirit, the Bible said he's a foolish man. What's a foolish man? A foolish man is a man that lacks information to be able to make good decisions to save his family. Wow, that's good. A foolish man is not a dumb man. A foolish man is a man who's uneducated and lacks the necessary information to make good decisions. To propense him to his destiny. But without having the connection with him. Because when you start, let me tell you something, I'm going to challenge you, I'm very close. You have to stop making excuses for the things that you're doing. Well, I was just grew up that way. Well, because I didn't have a, 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 a father in the house. Or because, of, now, Jesus had a whole bunch of odds against him. But he still wound up being the son of God. Yes. He overcame the odds. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 37, that you are more than a conqueror. Yes. Stop making excuses for why you're not where you're supposed to. Stop blaming other people. Amen. Stop saying, well, one day I'm going to get it right. Get it right right now. Amen. Stop saying, well, you know, I, you know and I, this is one of my biggest lines. I, I'm doing the best that I can. Okay, but what am I going to change? Because you know what I'm doing? I'm using that as a crutch to justify my behavior. Come on, y'all ain't talking back to me. Go ahead, Sister, sister Bob. Do you think that the other side of salvation is forgiveness? Because it's saving oh us from 
Our sins and things that we do, then he also has to forgive us. Amen. That's good. Watch this. One side is salvation, and the other side you think is forgiveness. Do I think? That's the book. (laughs) (laughs) So, Saban Jesus, Peter, Peter wants, Peter, five minutes, I probably 805, we shutting all that. Peter went to Jesus and said, How many times should I forgive? Jesus said 490 times. Now, nobody's going to offend you 490 times in a day. <laughs> if they do, then something is wrong with them. Then they get their head checked out, but whatever. But no one can possibly uh, uh, offend you uh, 490 times in a day. Why did he say that? He said that because he wanted you to always operate in forgiveness. Amen. Forgiveness is not so much for the person. Forgiveness releases you so that person can't control you. Oh, my God. I'm helping somebody. That's part of the covenant blessing. Forgiveness is not for the other person. Forgiveness is for you so that that person does not have control over your life. Amen. Amen. What about people holding people in bondage? That's a person that's not operating in forgiveness. But you can't operate in forgiveness if you're not connected to him. And you know what one of the problems is? Let me say this. It's funny how we can get deliverances in certain areas, but in certain areas we say, well, he's still working on the building. <laughs> Stop tripping, you know. I'm the, but, but when is there going to be some change? Amen, Pastor. Because you know what? You got to want to change. Because no matter how much you come to church, if you don't want to change, you're going to stay stuck in that behavior. That's right. That's true. You're going to stay stuck being upset. You're going to stay, stay stuck having temper tantrums. You're going to stay stuck being angry. You're going to stay stuck walking in unforgiveness, not being loving, not being kind, not want, not wanting to reconcile, not wanting to walk. You're going to, because you made the choice. He told Joshua, you choose you this day. In other words, there comes a point in life where God said, I'm not going to choose for you. You're going to choose for yourself. That's good. Thank you, Lord. So you can stop making excuses and say, well, it's because, no, it ain't no way. You can have destiny and purpose just like the next person, but it's based on your choices. Yes. Mm. Understand the covenant agreement. Understand what it is that God, and I'm going to write one more thing and let you go. Forgiveness, love, reconciliation. Now watch this one right here. How many people are kind? My God. Do you treat people right? How do you expect somebody want to be around you? You always got to, you're always moody and you're always up and down. You're like a stock market. How can you expect people to be around you? I'm talking about myself. My wife told me something. She said, baby, she said, you got this going. I said, baby, you know what? I'm right. Sometimes, you know, I've got this other stuff, got this stuff in it. But I had to really go to the scripture and Lord, show me myself. And he said, son, you need to work on this area. You need to get this thing in check. Amen. There's an area in your life that if you don't get it under subjection, it's going to wind up destroying you. Yes. I need God to talk to me like that because I don't want to destroy my future. Amen. Amen. I don't want to be playing around with stuff and, and that's just, no. God, if there's an area in my life, according to the covenant promises, if you said I am more than a conqueror, then would you please help me in this area so I can stop falling short and keep coming back to you with sacrifices every day because I did something I wasn't supposed to do? When is there going to be change? Yes. Because every time I do something, keep coming back and making excuses, I'm just like Israel. I keep bringing back the same sacrifices. Yes. But there's no inward change. Yes. Mm. How bad do you want to change? Yes. How bad do you want God to fix that? How bad do you want to access? Because certain blessings are not going to be accessed until you get your heart right. Yes. Yes. And I'm going to say this, and I don't know what I'm saying. To somebody, I'm going to close. If there are people that have hurt you, if there are people that have said things about you, your family, or whatever, I ask you today to let them go in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let them go. Amen. Let them go. Who cares what they said? As long as you're connected to him and as long as you know you're doing the best you can, guard your heart, Amen. guard your mind, let the dead bury the dead, take off the rear view mirror and keep on pressing towards your destiny. Yes. But let people go who have hurt you. Bury it, have your eulogy, and say, Nan, I'm going on, I'm, I'm going towards the place of destiny. Amen. 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 And I'm going to give you the scripture to go on. John 10.10. 10. He said that I come that you might have life. life. Come on. I didn't come for you to be a bump on the law. I didn't come for you to walk and have wind in your jaws. I didn't come for you to act like you sucked on some lemon. I come that you could be excited yes. about purpose and excited about destiny. Yes. And he said, not only life, but life more abundantly. I called you to walk in increase. Amen? Amen. 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 Let him go.
and let go. That's it. Let him go and let go.